All right, everyone. It's been a year. I've been doing this for a year. And with that being said, I figured, hey, maybe it makes sense to do a little bit of a fleet update on all the various different automobiles that you have seen, haven't seen, that sort of thing that live in my stupid fleet. So let's do a quick walkthrough of what I got here. Other people seem to be doing it. And I've been doing this for like a year now. So maybe you guys would like to see this. If you like this, let me know. Here's all the keys to the things that actually move under their own power. There are a couple other ones that I'll walk you guys through that uh, don't move on their own. Um, but we'll get a quick look at uh, what you got in store for you. It's a little bit of everything from a lot of different generations and a lot of different manufacturers. And I got them laid out in the order that I bought them from newest to oldest. So let's start with the newest. This is my 2005 a uh, Mercedes-Benz CL65 AMG. Um, it's dirty as hell right now because it's Michigan and uh, we are, you know, in fall time. Uh, but I really wanted one of the last of the great V12s. Uh, I already had a V12. I enjoyed quite a bit. We'll get to that one in a second. And I uh, wanted another one. Uh, but inside, pretty darn clean car. Not too much wrong with it. Uh, mileage on, it's only about uh, 95,000 right now. And much is the trend you will start to see. I close the door. It has a check engine light. Now I know what that check engine light is. I'm not too worried about it. And that's the trend that you're going to see with a lot of these cars because I know what they are. And when you have these many cars, it's just hard to keep up with them. So the reason I got this thing originally was, one, I kind of have a weird addiction to white cars. And from the research I can do, there aren't a whole heck of a lot of white CL65s out there. Um, might be one or two for the 2005 model year total ever made. And so I got one of those. And I just, I have a love for the big torquey V12. Uh, it's unbelievable to actually drive. They're great highway cars. Things got power for days. Not so great on the gas mileage, but really, you know, as a weekend driver or a fun tour, not too big a deal. Let's go take a look at the next car. All right, this one's pretty easy. You guys have seen this quite a bit. Here is the sky. Um, more to come on this shortly. I won't go into too much depth on it. We're getting pretty darn close. You guys will notice there's a cage out in front of it there uh, that I am about to actually put in. That's why it's in the garage right now. Um, but uh, you've seen a lot about this one, so we won't go too much in depth into this car because it's gotten the most love on the channel so far. Just to keep the trend running though, I'll fire it up. check engine light and a bunch of other lights because there's no interior in this car and yeah okay whatever next up you have maybe seen one video on this on the channel uh this is my 2002 bmw 760 li uh it is also kind of dirty and filthy uh v12 as well long wheelbase i mean some of the fun stuff this car's got i mean the most fun thing i think it's got well, other than keyless entry that lets me in and that satisfying little beep it sometimes makes when you lock it. It's the refrigerator in the back. Yeah, you can keep stuff cold in there. Maybe there's a beer in there. No, nope. just a bottle of water. But in general, this car is also in pretty damn good shape. Uh, this one may or may not have a check engine light. Let's check and see. All right, for being known as one of the least reliable BMWs ever, this car has actually been great. Um, of course, I say that and it kind of hiccups on startup. There was a problem with the check engine light kind of coming on and off in this car, and it's off right now. That's kind of awesome. Um, it's got a camshaft position that's position sensor that's starting to sort of fail a little bit, but it comes on and off once every couple of months, and then I just reset it, and then it just goes away again. It doesn't impact the way the car drives. You can see it's only got a little over 100,000 miles. Interior is clean. This is a California car I bought, and I got it for super duper cheap. So we broke the trend, guys. No check engine light on this one. All right, next up, an oldie. You can tell by the keys. Here we are deep in the bowels of storage barn, and this is the most recent car you guys have seen on the channel, my 1986 Mustang GT. I'll 
zoom out the camera a little bit here so it's a little easier to see. Uh, I found this thing actually when renting an Airbnb. It was parked rotting away in the driveway of the house that I rented. Hadn't been driven in years. And so I decided to make them a low ball offer on it. They accepted it and voila, now I have an old school Mustang convertible. Um, I have done quite a bit of work on this that has not been on the channel. Uh, I won't go into all of it right now. Um, you know, some simple stuff, LED interior lighting and all that, new steering wheel because the old one was pretty ratty. Um, I'm going to actually ma manipulate the sky seats to probably fit in here because they're kind of nice. Oh, look at that. That LED is already starting to go. Fantastic. Uh, and then under the hood, I'll show you that. It's a good old Ford 302. Now, I've done a little bit to this crappy Ram air intake. It's a piece of garbage. I'll probably replace that with something a little bit better. Um, did a EGR and AC delete. The AC was totally shot from 35 years of sitting. EGR wasn't working anymore. Charcoal canister. I mean, this is kind of muscle car uh, sort of stuff. And as you guys know, also recently did a manual swap in it. So now it's a five-speed with a T5 in it. A lot of fun to have around for the summertime. But right now, She's asleep for the winter because there's no reason to be driving a 35-year-old rear-wheel drive manual Mustang in the winter in Michigan. You guys might notice I didn't fire up the Mustang. That's not because it doesn't start, but because we know there's no check engine lights on it because there's no check engine light on it. It's that old. That didn't exist yet back in 86. So I didn't even bother. I didn't want to take the cover off and uncover the muffler and all that. It runs. You saw it run. Cool. This one's my favorite. So this is my 2000 BMW E39 M5. Uh, very, very little done to it beyond stock. Um, you can see I got the little nostrils on there because I like the black nostrils over the chrome. Uh, but beyond that, the only other things that I've done to this car is I did a muffler delete on it because it sounds better and it doesn't drone at all. And then let's open her up. Uh, that satisfying clack of an E39. Uh, I have put the newer 16x9 unit in here. A little dusty right now. And then I've also put in an E60 535 shifter, which is a little bit better. And then I put in a little, uh, it's got the ZHP weighted knob on it. So all BMW parts that have been added to this thing. Um, this is by far the most fun car I have to drive on a regular basis. And uh, let's go take a seat in it and fire it up. The other modification I've done in this car, which you can't actually see anywhere because I've done a pretty good job of hiding it, is I have a very old and now out of business DICE Bluetooth unit in it. And that actually, the unit itself sits back here, and then I have a cable running all the way back to the trunk. And then I also have a cable running up to here that goes to the microphone. So that's where the stock, uh, if you had the phone system inside the BMW, the microphone went. So I've got a microphone up in there. And then I get Bluetooth and Hey Siri and all that crap in my car. Uh, and I also have uh, the, the ability to not remember what the hell I was going to say next. So let's just skip that and go on to the next thing. Now, just like every other car that we've seen, and this is a BMW, so the odds are very high that this is going to have dash lights, right? Yep, fasten seat belts, okay, cool. And we got the brake light, the ABS light, the traction light, and, oh, check engine light's not on yet. Give it a second, it'll come on, I'm sure. No, it fixed itself? Somehow I doubt that. Oh well, I'll take it. Under the hood of this old girl is the just under five liter, just under 400 horsepower BMW M motor. Uh, pretty clean under here, not too much to do. All that ABS stuff is coming from this. I cooked this bad boy on a track day. Uh, pretty common problem. These things sit really close to the header down there when you get the header nice and warm when you're running it hard. It actually melts the solders on these when they're 20 years old. Uh, and then you have to reflow it. I've had it reflowed once. It only fixed the problem for about three months and then it broke. So I'm probably going to have to buy a new ABS control unit and then have it rekeyed to the uh, car. I don't have the tools to do that, unfortunately. Uh, the other thing that's got to get done on this car that we'll probably have a video on pretty soon is down here, there is a little uh, solenoid valve thingy that uh, controls oil pressure to Vanos. It's not the Vanos solenoids, which are on these little guys right here. I've already replaced all the seals on those. Those are nice and new Viton seals. 
but uh, what it ends up doing is bleeding extra oil into the intake manifold. So you eat a little bit of oil and you get nice little white puffs of smoke when you're uh, driving it fresh. That, uh, that valve should fix that once I get it replaced. Just haven't had time to do that yet. So that's what equates to all of the check engine lights and things like that. It also has bad O2 sensors, which is normally what throws the, uh, the check engine light on it. And I don't care too much about that, but I will get that fixed too. And this wonderful beast nestled among the trees with the deer running away in the background as I walk up on it is my 2001 Ford Excursion with the 7.3 PSD in it. Unfortunately, right now, this guy is out of commission. There's something going on. I have a pretty nasty oil leak either around one of the high pressure areas. So under the hood, as soon as I crank it up, it starts spewing oil everywhere. Who knows, maybe I blew a hole in the block or something. This thing has about 240,000 miles on it, which honestly for these things is kind of low, but in otherwise decent shape, no real problems there. Um, and uh, I need to get this thing back up and running uh, before too long. I guarantee you if I had the key here and plugged it in, um, it would have a check engine light, but since right now there actually isn't any battery in the car, it's not gonna do anything. So we'll, we'll add this to the check engine light category. This is a fun one too. This is my very dirty and somewhat scuffed up winter beater, which is a Honda Civic. EP3, old SI hatchback here. Now, uh, I've done quite a bit to this. I got this car for 500 bucks. It had a blown motor, uh, had some rusted under parts. So now it has uh, full RSX type S uh, suspension and braking all the way around. Um, still pretty much an EP3 from the inside. And again, this is a dirty car. Had some heated seats, got a decent radio in it. Um, and then up underneath the hood, We have a K24, so I d I've done a full K24 out of a TSX swap into this as well. And again, this is a dirty car. This is my kind of winter beater, so it's not exactly in the greatest shape, um, but pretty darn fun to drive. Let's fire it up real quick. All right, so here we are inside the Civic. I think it needs a new fuel pressure regulator. It's a little slow to start when it's nice and cold. But this one doesn't have a check engine light. It does have an SIS light. That's just because I don't have the computer for Hondas to reset that, um, which is kind of a pain in the butt. But otherwise, this thing runs great. Um, no real complaints about it. Uh, favorite thing about this car, honestly, is the stick shift location. I can be touching the stick shift and the steering wheel at the same time, which is pretty neat. Other thing uh, in this car, it says it's only got a 6800 red line, but uh, it does have a TSX motor in it, so I've got the red line associated properly, so it'll roll up to 7500-ish. Uh, this car is just an absolute blast to, to drive around and, and bomb down streets with and you know have fun in the snow. Uh, who knows what I'll do with it. Maybe we'll turbocharge this thing one day. Maybe we will, I don't know, turn it into a gambler car. I don't know, man. It's a fun car. I have it, whatever. Stuttgart. And here you can see my 2009 Porsche 911 Carrera 4S. Uh, it does have a PDK in it, as you can see in there. Uh, generally speaking, pretty good shape. I got this car at a salvage uh, for, well, let's just say a whole heck of a lot less than what it was worth. Um, probably about what the motor is worth in it and had to do a little bit of work to get it going but now it runs great this has been my primary track car for the past few years um, unfortunately well not unfortunately it just it costs a lot to keep a 911 going on the track it is a fantastic car but I wanted something even more aggressive which is why I'm building the sky so let's go take a look inside all right here we are in the 911 fire her up Close the door so exhaust doesn't make as noise. Okay, so I haven't filled it up since the last track day, so let's go through all the things here. Okay, I'm not wearing my seatbelt, that's fine. Um, check engine visit workshop, I know what that's for. Uh, let's see what else we got here. So adding air, that's probably because I haven't filled this thing up since the last track day, it's kind of been sitting here. Uh, service now, that's just my oil service, which I gotta do, and I just haven't gotten a chance to reset the light. Um, Oh, that's it. 
Oh, yeah, and then I got my check engine light on, and I got my tire pressure monitor on, and I got a million other things on. Nothing really to be worried about here. Filling up the tires, doing an oil change, resetting it with the, the computer, and we're good to go. The other check engine light uh, issue is O2 sensors on this thing, too. As you can see, it's got 130,000 miles on it, and they are, I've been putting hard miles on it. I've had it since about uh, 105,000 miles, and most of those miles are either on big road trips, track days, that sort of thing. This car is otherwise really clean there's no real major issues or deficiencies with it runs great no problems so i don't know if uh, i'm going to be getting rid of this one anytime soon or not i think i think this one's going to stick around for a while last but not least well it's not really last because i'm going to hit a couple other ones but of cars that uh, i actually have some degree of emotional attachment to uh is my 1998 jeep wrangler which everybody that knows me makes fun of me for because I started this project about six years ago. I bought this car new off the lot in 1998 and it was my daily driver for almost a decade before I started getting into all these other stupid cars. Uh, so let's go through the 98 Jeep. What most of you guys don't realize is that you've probably seen a big chunk of this Jeep in a lot of the videos because it's basically been a wall behind the sky in half of them. So my Jeep Wrangler consists of this, and this, and this, and that, and all of this, and this, and that, back underneath all this crap, that too, and those. So right now you can see I've got quite a bit of crap leaned up against the tub, but you can see where I've already cut out the floor pans uh, for the driver's side and replaced all of those in the both the front and rear. I still got to do that down below on the other side because they're all rusted out. I uh, got a little bit more rust to take care of back here, which is just sanding and recoating. And then I got a little patch I got to weld in right there. And then it's time to start kind of putting this thing back together, getting it into paint, starting to do the things I need to do. So the ultimate plans for this car are basically I'm doing a frame off restore on it, uh, and it's going to get a nice hefty lift kit on it. Probably going to do a Ford 8.8 rear end in it with a posi, and it's also got an LS swap. So it's going to be a super big three hybrid. We're going to have some Jeep, we're going to have some Ford, we're going to have some GM, all bolted together to have one big fun car. Oh, hey, look at that. My finger was in the shot the entire time. Great. I didn't even grab a key for this one because I think the key's still sitting in it. This is a 2000 and I don't even know Subaru Outback and uh, it doesn't have an engine or a transmission in it. I got this car and it's clean. It doesn't have much rust on it at all, if, if any, really. Um, I got this car from a friend for free. They blew up the motor in it, and the only thing that they said is you can have the car for free, but you have to turn it into a gambler car. So, uh, oh, hey, look at that Slayer, Sublime. Hello Kitty with an AK. Um, Ninja. So. We're gonna turn this eventually into a gambler car. Uh, right now though, it's just kind of sitting, rotting. Um, it's not in bad shape, it's all sealed up, it's not getting wet or anything. You can see it's quite a few parts in the back from the engine when I pulled it, and there's nothing underneath here. Uh, I can't even lift it up right now, but there's nothing in there, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Honorable mention for the two cars that are sitting in my driveway that aren't actually mine. Uh, this is an old, I don't know, 90, I think, DA Integra. Uh, but underneath, it's all autocross prepped, completely gutted. Um, and uh, this bad boy is got a B16 in it because the uh, LS VTEC that was in it blew up. Not my car. Probably not going to be here for too much longer. Um, but we might show some stuff on the channel because there were talks of turbocharging it. And this is my friend's truck. And it also has a seized motor. Hey, guess what? It's the same friend that seized the motor in the uh, Subaru. Go figure. Uh, what we're going to do on this bad boy is put a brand new motor into it and uh, get rid of it because it's in not awful shape, but it's not exactly great. Uh, we'll probably do a video on that too so I can teach somebody that's never pulled a motor how to pull a motor and reinstall it and hopefully have some success. There's also a couple of bikes here. Um, so this is my 2000 Honda ST1100, little four banger. Uh, really fun bike for the highway. Um, not a whole lot I've done to it other than uh, inside the lockbox here, I have actually put, uh, let's see, we'll show you. This is not super interesting. Um, my registration and all that. But there's also, oh, no, it's not on this side. I'm stupid. It's not in the lockbox. It's in the easy to get to side. There's just a custom charger in there that uh, has its own on-off switch. 
uh, so that you can charge your phone and stuff on it. I did put ha heated handlebars on it as well, so you can see there's a little switch for that. And then it's also got some highway blades so that if you want to switch your feed, uh, seating position while you're riding. Pretty cool bike. I don't know if I'm going to keep it around that much longer because I haven't been doing long rides lately. So if anybody's interested in a really cool old Honda, let me know. All right, guys. Well, that's the fleet update. Thanks for whoever's watched for the last year. It's been kind of fun. I'll probably keep this thing going. I don't know. We'll see. It's been been interesting. Not a ton of people watching it, but there's a few people watching it. So I thank you guys a ton for doing that. Uh, if you know anybody else that likes this sort of stuff, let them know about me. Uh, and if there's any of these cars that you're like, hey, man, that was pretty cool. I want to learn a little bit more about that. Post it down in the comments. Maybe we'll do some more videos on that particular one. Uh, until next time, catch you guys later.